Hello, BookTube. The other day I was walking out with the bean and we came across a little free library uh, and I found this old poetry collection from the 1930s with a 1960s dust jacket that was put on it by a student who didn't mark in their school or their name or their classroom, but nevertheless this brought back so many memories that I of course had to get the volume. Uh, and I read you a, a poem from it yesterday. This is uh, the new poetry. Uh, which is now anything but, th this is this is old poetry, but once upon a time, this was the new poetry, it was in a school, and I read you uh, a poem yesterday, and had a blast doing it, I very much enjoyed it, and got a ton of emails from, from a lot of you, saying that you also really enjoyed it, that you missed our little poetry readings together. I know it claimed to be any kind of poetry savant, uh, but I do enjoy it, if it's not talking down to me, if it's not condescending to me, if it's not being arrogant or stupid, or exclusionary. Uh, if it's not being, you know, willfully obscure, uh, which was poetry all the way up until the beats. So they hadn't happened yet when, when this, when this book was, uh, was published, they hadn't happened yet. So I thought we'd do another one, uh, today. And this is a poem called What Artifice? And it's by a poet named George Dillon. Uh, let's see here. What artifice against foul time, so difficult, I often cry, as this I make of air and rhyme? Oh, any other, I reply. Yes, any house on any site, sacred to eagles or to doves, if a man builds it in delight or, and terror for the one he loves. So the narrator of the poem is asking, what could possibly be harder than this, than writing verse? Any other structure will do. Uh, the thing his passionate hand devise, his mind reviews with cold despair. Likely as not, a storm will rise and hurl it down for all his care. Likely as not, when he has done and pulled away the props and ropes, his deer will wed another one. He knows, but while he builds, he hopes. Warm youth with only time to fear, now in the blood of bitter men. If you come here and tarry here, I shall as good as live again. May you find here, desirous youth, that wild and deathless fugitive whom I have followed, for in truth, living with her, I long to live. You waders through weeds and flowers, come rest within my house of words, and you who toil at loftier towers round which the planets play like birds, and you who fell upon your knees and heard the roofs of fortune fall, a house of song will stand for these, I dare say, if it stands at all. If it should tumble let it go give back to the ground to give back the ground to wordless things when wondering children want to know what ruin is this beset by wings tell them no matter something made in haste and ignorance as it were a house where beauty never stayed but tell them it was made for her uh this is a lovely poem, I think, very uh, intelligent in the way that it's hammered together in terms of the, uh, you know, the structure, the way it scans. Uh, a little bit ironic, I think the poet probably knew what kind of irony he was courting. Uh, this was, once upon a time, a well-known poet, won the Pulitzer Prize for poetry. Now, totally gone. No one remembers him. There's never been a biography. There's never been a collected poetry. There are no new anthologies, new anthologies of American poetry that come out in 2022 certainly will not even consider, including George Dillon. The most you will read about him now is a, a, a tiny couple of mentions in the index of a biography of Edna St. Vincent Millay, uh, whom he knew <laughs> in his youth. He was very, very good looking. Uh, but as a solid half dozen volumes of poetry, they're all wonderful. This is wonderful. The irony here is that the poem is about the monuments that you can build to love. And the narrator of the poem is at least partly, he is not, the narrator of the poem is not too high on himself, but he is at least partly suggesting that a narrative, that a house of words will last better than a house that uh, any storm can blow down, uh, that can, you know, be encumbered by weeds and flowers. Uh, and I have often made that point on this channel myself, that the only shot that you get at any kind of immortality as a human being is art, specifically writing. I mean, every once in a while, you'll be in a right position to make a painting or to make a sculpture that you can carve your name into, but that's very rare. Whereas nowadays, everybody has the ability to write. And who knows how long that writing will last? Who knows what form it will take? 
so I often say, I often advise you, you know, if you're, if you're worried about immortality, if you're worried that in 500 years no one will have any idea that you ever existed at all, write something. Write a lot. And George Dillon felt the same way at, often at times. It's hard not to be encouraged to feel that way uh, the day you win the Pulitzer. <laughs> that, that day, on that day, you really think that in 500 years, you know, President Hoover might have a problem, but I will be remembered. And it doesn't work out that way. Even for writers, it doesn't always work out that way. No one remembers George Dillon. No one reprints his work. No one knows it. No one reads it and enjoys it, even though you could hear it is very enjoyable. Uh, so let that be a lesson to you. And what is the lesson? Have you written today? I know, I know some of you are laughing because you're thinking, well, you can find that lesson in anything, can't you? A boiled cabbage. Have you written today? <laughs> Nevertheless, it is a valid question. Have you written today? Have you at least made your attempt to become George Dillon and get in this anthology or whatever it's going to be down the line? I would like to hope that you have the internet as we're told usually as a threat uh never forgets that is actually also a promise so <laughs> that's your that's your lesson for today a little little poem from a poet who's long forgotten i think i will stick with this volume for a while so you may get another poetry reading or two uh and in the meantime you have a nagging lesson <laughs> it is a beautiful sunny weekend get to work <laughs> get to work outdo george dillon see if you can anyway uh, but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up before I rant for another hour. So I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.